One of the things that's important to uh, stress in a workshop like this is that we are using all traditional me methods of uh, joinery and forging techniques to accomplish this project. And the thing that we should note is that uh, a number of us in the business now use these techniques to reproduce ironwork of the periods that uh, a lot of these things came from. I myself do historical restoration work and we still use the techniques of the periods to reproduce the ironwork that is necessary for a variety of uh, restorations, uh, types of work, and these talents and these facilities are still functioning and still available for a lot of the people to use today. Um, it's uh, one of the things that gets into your blood when you learn these techniques and uh, usually the simplest approach is the most effective and uh, most productive. So we have learned a lot from the um, our uh, forerunners in this trade and we expect to carry on these trades for many years to come. This is one of the cross arms of this gate we're building. This is one of two that we've made, they're identical. Uh, they each have about five holes in them and several around, two are square. These will hold the vertical bars, some are twisted and some are not decorated. These will go through the bars we're making. This one is gonna be the top bar. The men behind me are about to make the bottom bar. Um, this bar was made from a solid piece of stock. This is about an inch square. Uh, the holes were opened up with the use of a chisel. This bar was heated up. Uh, it was pre-measured, so we didn't have to worry about marking after we heated it up. All we had to do was heat the bar up in the proper place. This chisel was about hammered approximately halfway through, and the bar was immediately flipped over and hammered the other way through until the hole was completely opened. After the hole has been opened with the chisel, we'll use what is called an opening punch. This is going to open the hole just a tiny bit, not completely round yet. This punch is inserted in one side of the metal. Uh, it's driven about an inch or two through. The metal is turned over, punch is removed, and driven into the opposite side. Uh, the punch is then removed, and a piece of metal is reinserted into the fire, and the hole, partially open, is heated back up red again. Uh, the next step is upsetting. I'm going to hold this piece of metal against me like this, and my partner is going to strike this piece of metal on the end. It's going to drive it right into me. This is going to cause the hole to open up even more round, almost as round as it is now. Uh, at that point, another drift, just a plain round drift, will be inserted into that hole, driven about halfway through, removed. The hole is going to be flipped over. The punch will be reinserted again driven completely through this time. Uh, if we want this hole to be square, we're going to take another heat and we're going to hammer this flat against the anvil. Uh, and again, after this is flat, I'm going to hold this piece of metal against me. My partner is going to drive it back into me. Uh, this combination of hitting on the end and hitting on the side is going to make this hole even more square. At that point, it'll reach about three quarters of an inch wide and a square punch will be driven in and drift the hole open square. This will be driven in about halfway through, removed, bar will be flipped over, it'll be stuck back in again, hammered in all the way through. Uh, this is one of two bars. Uh, this, is, this is the top one. The bottom one is going to be riveted to the gate. To rivet, we need a tenon sticking out of the end. The men behind me are working on the actual tenon. This is an actual piece. This is the gate being made. The testing is done. I have prepared and welded a corner, a forge welded corner, like the one that will be done for the gate frame that we're building. And I did it to demonstrate the proper preparation of the pieces and the proper heat and the proper technique in forging it. And to do that, you have to cut the material off on a corner on a 45, upset it, which means to thicken it, 
scarf it so that you have a very thin edge which will hammer together well. And then it goes into the fire. It's flushed in the fire. The flux is a compound that prevents the steel from burning and allows you to heat the material all the way through to almost a plastic stage. All right. Over. Pull in against the anvil. All right, let me have it. Straight end. That's why I wanted you to hold it up here with the tongs so it won't drop down. Okay. Wire brush. All right. That's how a corner weld scarf is prepared, and that's the result. This is a 19th century book by VLA Leduc, and it's about architecture from the Yellen Library. And it shows in these drawings, which were made in the 15th century, of a gate which Yellen took the design from, for the original gate, from which we copied the gate we're doing in the workshop. Now right here you'll see the two stocks which were used in the head and the fleur-de-lis. Two-inch stock of course was used for the larger heads which were forged and formed and worked down. This stock was used for the fleur-de-lis which is half by three quarters. Each leaf was made from this piece and then forged welded together. So what we'll do now is start with the fleur-de-lis and what you will see from here on in will be the process of making the fleur-de-lis.